hey hey family welcome back to my channel this is life of interruptions with me pearl osa and i'm bringing you love peace happiness to whatever time zone whatever frame of mind whatever part of the earth that you are in today i want to discuss a very very quick topic um as usual you can hear noise in the background it is just signs of a happy alive and kicking family amen okay so talking about the family i actually want to talk about the children today but before i do would you please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and every time there's something new, you will be in the know. So I'm talking today about raising Josephs. And I have been very conscious to raise my children for every possible eventuality. So my husband often tells a story about growing up. Um, in difficult circumstances and having to leave like many children in Africa to go stay with relatives from an early age and staying with those relatives was not uh, necessarily just as a fun having guests but as an econo economic contributor to the household so helping with household chores going out and hawking food and bringing the money home that kind of thing which was fine because it was something he had started early at home he had been prepared from his home and was ready to go out and do you know that kind of menial labor should the times required and i'm reminded of the story in scripture of a young very cocky very sure um boy by the name of joseph joseph you know when i think about him goes out in a designer suit to go meet laborers in the field He's there in Versace talking about, Daddy said I should come see how you guys are doing with the sheep. So he was bound to irritate. Um, and he found himself going from his father's house to the pit, to prison, or rather to the pit, to Potiphar's house, and then to prison. And I believe he needed all of these points along the way to his journey because he just needed to be kind of tamed a bit, you know. Um, there's nothing wrong with being confident, but there are just certain characteristics that are needed to be able to excel in leadership. He needed to come from the place where it was all about him to a place where it could be about the Lord. Because it was all I, I, daddy said, me, 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 the sun, moon, stars, they bowed to me. And by the end of the story, when he's uh, talking to Pharaoh, he says, there's nothing God cannot do. God is the one who translates dreams. God will, you know, see us through the situation. So he needed that journey. Now, as one who has had my moments, who believes God has called her for, for greatness and has had to go through certain routes on the way to that greatness, has had to have the, you know, John the Baptist in the obscurity of the desert moments, have had to have my Moses in the mountain with sheep moments. Um, all of those times that took me away from my high horse and took me away from, you know, whatever it was I thought I had accomplished or could do. Um, I remember being retrenched and now just looking at a different set of economic circumstances and, you know, just thinking to myself, now what now? And how do I handle this now? And I remember the thoughts that went through my mind, everything I was prepared to do um, just to make sure that I could continue to contribute my quota economically. Now, bring that back to children we raise our children we tell them they're the sun the moon the star we tell them they're the greatest thing since sliced bread they can do and be anything they put their minds to and this is absolutely true um if god has said that is the word concerning them then that is what it is you, we can't water it down to make society comfortable with who our children have been you know we've birthed greatness there's nothing we can do about it but the thing is that your greatness must still go through process and you need to prepare your children as much um, for that process, for the downtime, for the difficulty, as much as you do prepare them for the great times. How many of us can really say that we have children prepared for the pit, for Potiphar's house, and for prison? If your children along the way find themselves having to sweep someone's floors and scrub someone's toilets, will they be able or will they think that God has abandoned them? How are you raising your children it's an extremely important conversation to have the reason is so many of us have come from circumstances where we thought to ourselves no child of mine is going to have to go through that so we overcompensate we want to take on their struggles we want to take on their suffering um 
And you know the story about the butterfly, that as it uh, metamorphosizes from being in the caterpillar stage into the butterfly stage, if you break the cocoon open for it and don't let it struggle through, same thing with a chick trying to break through the eggshell. If you break that shell from the outside and not allow them to struggle to get out, the muscle that should have formed in the process will never be formed. Sometimes you find that children that are born by cesarean section have more breathing problems and more health problems than children who were born by pushing because they did not exercise certain muscles, um, certain lung capacity in the drive to push their way through into the world, so to speak. And so we need to step back and let our children push. And it's tough. No parent wants to see their children suffer. No one wants to step back when you can actually solve the problem. But we've got to let these children develop muscle. So while we are you know, uh, intent on them having academic prowess, which is wonderful. And they go for all these extra mural activities. You know, they can play tennis, they can play squash, they can play, they can swim. They, you know, they've got colors and heaven knows what, but can your children cook a meal, clean a house, care for another person, wash clothes, the very basics, simply because at, 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 the, at the least, our hope is that they will have to do these things for themselves and should be well able to. They would have to do these things in their own homes and for their own children and should be well able to. They cannot be completely dependent on domestic help forever. Having said that, should the worst happen, which we all hope doesn't happen, which is A, that you die before anyone expects you to. And so they have to fend for themselves earlier than anticipated or that along the way in life, you know, um, they get retrenched like I did uh, or face whatever, whatever other form of economic hardships and have to make tough decisions, have to start again, have to scrape around. And the only option is that they do menial labor or your children be able to, and not just able to do the work, but will they be able to do it excellently to the extent that those who see them being faithful in the little will pull them forward to come and do bigger and greater things. Will they be able to do it with the right attitude? Because the Bible says, do all things as unto the Lord, you know, not with lip service. Would they be able to carry the right attitude and carry Christ even in the gutter, even in the manger? Because guess what? If you cannot handle the manger, the sheep and whatever other animals you find there, it's going to be tough for you in the palace. Coming to think of it, it wasn't just Joseph, right? It was Jacob who had to serve in that capacity, serve Laban for a while um, before he could go out and be established and be his own man. And this was the person who was going to carry the mantle of the nation of Israel, who was actually going to be named Israel and have the whole of the nation named after him. So covenant was riding on him. His greatness was not in question, but for a season he had to serve. And everything we do in life... Um, is about service. We go out and we serve our loved ones through the work that we do. We serve our bosses through the work that we do. We serve customers through the work that we do. If we own the company, we serve, you know, our constituencies and again, our customers. So if you don't have an ingrained sense of service, you're going to suffer. And our children need to be taught that the master is the servant of all, that the first ought to know how to be the last because it makes you credible. It makes you caring. Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, he said, no one cares how much you know till they know how much you care. And you're not able to care till you've walked in someone else's shoes. I had to teach the one son the one time using a very simple example of mopping the floor. I said, don't, don't use the mop. The mop doesn't allow you to get into the corners, the crevices of the floor. Get on your knees and use a rag so that you can see the problems closer to the ground. And it's the same thing with our leadership. When they have to leave their air conditioned offices every now and again, I hope, I wish it wasn't just around election time, but they need to leave those air conditioned offices and they need to go out into the community, into the society that they serve and find out the itches and the aches and the pains of the constituencies that they serve. We serve a high priest or serve with a high priest who is not untouched by our infirmities. We need to begin to raise children who can be touched by the infirmities of others, who really genuinely care, who do things not for what they can get, but because they're there to solve. You know, I think more and more about Jacob and I think about the fact that he had come from being the son of probably the wealthiest man in his environment. So we're told that Isaac had such wealth that the Philistines around him envied him 
and even feared him and said, you know, I think you need to move away from us. And he comes away from that kind of wealth and he goes and serves under someone who did not have that much wealth, but he was able to bet down. Yes, he did it because he had his eye on the price, which was Rachel. Um, beautiful love story there. But the thing is that eye on the price or not, if he had not been taught and ingrained inherently the ability to serve when necessary, he would not have been able to fight for his price. He would not have been able to work for his price. He would not have been able to serve when circumstances demanded that he did. So I know I sound rushed, but it's because it's two minutes to six. It's time for my family prayer and I need to go. Um, but my son asked me today, mommy, my four-year-old, he says, mommy, do you still do life of interruptions? And I realized it had been just too long and I had to put this out there. Bottom line is that life will throw curveballs. Yes, our children are great. They're going to do great things. There's no question about it. They are called and the promises of God are true. But along the way to getting there, there are things that are meant to process you, to, to break you in order to build you, um, to teach your hands to war and your fingers to battle. And the worst thing you can have is a parent that never equipped you, didn't equip you to stand true in entrepreneurship, in marriage, in community service, in life in general. So when was the last time you put a broom in your child's hand? You put the knife and said, go chop some onions, you know, and just let them go out and serve um, and, and learn a heart of giving and serving in the community and having a good day because they gave to someone else and not because it was given to them. Let's start to bring that back, especially this time of COVID. Let's start to bring that back to our children. There's so much we can teach them. So if you ask me, okay, I've heard you, Pearl, but practically what do we do? Um, I think you need to get your children to be hands-on in everything that you do, from the household all the way to the business, all the way to your vocation, whatever it might be. Don't just tell them about it. Let them be about it. Get your children to be practically involved in everything that entails the running of your house and the running of your business. Um, there's a, an age in which they observe from afar, but there has to come an age where they physically get involved um, and you do it together as a team. The patriarchs were... Uh, you know, well-established, they were crown princes, but they walked the journey with their children. They taught their children. Their children learned by seeing um, them do and also did in return. We learn by seeing God do, and we do as he does. He works. Jesus said, I work as my father works. So we cannot raise a generation of lazy people. They will turn around to hate us eventually. So may God bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. I repeat, like subscribe and hit the notification bell and uh, please definitely comment down below and let me know your thoughts how you would want to raise your children how you were raised the deficiencies you see in today's mode of raising and how you would encourage us to close those gaps love you much love you plenty bye